But when we first got online, we were all anonymous. You know, I'm from Miami, Cheryl Miami, one, two, three. Everyone had their handle. You went into chat rooms, you looked around the web, you surfed, there wasn't really even search exactly, and you were anonymous. It wasn't about who you were, and it was actually unthinkable to put your real identity online. No one you knew would put their real name on the web. Now what's happened? Fast forward, as Randy said in his introduction, and it's basically unthinkable not to put your real identity online. People all over the world share daily, from the mundane, great weekend with the family, to the profound. I was reminded of the beauty of life when there was a child born in my family. Update by update, photo by photo, status update by status update, this is real people sharing their real lives with the people around them. Today I'm going to talk about this shift to real identity. Our view at Facebook is that it's all about people. The web is about people, marketing is about people, and for the first time, you can do word of mouth marketing at scale. The goal Facebook has is to map out all of these connections. Not just the connections between people, but the connections between people and the things they care about. We call this the social graph. When a person connects to another person on Facebook, they friend them, and then they have established an ongoing connection where they can send messages, they can post to their wall, those messages pop up in their newsfeed. When a person connects to a brand by liking it, they're establishing that same connection with that same ability to have an ongoing two-way dialogue and see those posts in their newsfeed. Every single day on Facebook, 15 million people friend each other. And every day on Facebook, 50 million pages are liked by fans, even more than people friending. So people are telling us by their actions that they want both types of these connections. These connections really change our relationships with people we didn't know before. So think about your relationship with an artist. Historically, if you liked an artist like Lady Gaga, you'd buy their album, you'd, wow, I'm really dating myself. You'd go on iTunes and download their music. You'd go to their concerts. You might get to see an interview they did, but you wouldn't have any daily kind of interaction with an artist you'd like other than listening to their music. Lady Gaga is the most popular celebrity on Facebook. She has over 18 million people who like her page. And she posts really regularly. She calls her fans little monsters. I don't know if I'm proudly or kind of shyly proud to be one of them, but I'm one of them. And you hear from her every day in these little ways. It feels personal in a way that an artist never could have made it feel before. This is the power of the social graph. Now, brands are a big part of the social graph, too. People love the Old Spice Guy. Over 850,000 people have liked this page. And P&G manages this page very carefully and very actively. They've used it increasingly over the year, and P&G, their sales for Old Spice are considerably up. They post very uh, brand-appropriate messages. So here's a status update. A relaxing Monday morning filled with 37,000 squat thrusts, rippling professional weights, and bathing in swagger body wash. And yours? I felt like I was feeling good about my workout until I saw that. When companies have a hard time, Facebook and the two-way dialogue becomes even more important. Over the last year, Toyota turned to Facebook to do an active listening campaign to make sure that as they went through the troubles, that their customers were still working with them and still believing in them and what their brand stood for. They worked with Saatchi and Saatchi, and they launched this as the autobiography campaign where they put up an app and they asked users to come on and tell their stories of how Toyota has affected their lives. They got 8,000 video submissions, and then they turned this into an ad campaign that ran both on Facebook and on TV, like this one, where a woman got a surprise from the Toyota company. Oh, snap. Oh. We're giving you this new Toyota Corolla. Ah! Words can't even describe how excited I am about getting my new Corolla. <laughs> So brands have always talked to people. They've done this for a long time. But on Facebook, you can talk to and you can listen. This is the power of the social graph. Many brands are starting to make Facebook their primary page online. If you look at the number of people connected to a Facebook page and you look at a website's monthly viewers, 
What you find in any case of a company that's put up a page or done any activity is that the number of fans to a Facebook page really dwarfs the number of fans, <clears throat> excuse me, that go to websites. And this makes sense. As marketers, we've known for a long time that it's easier to go to where people are than get them to come to you. This makes engaging with people on Facebook even more attractive. So we know that marketers don't just want to create great campaigns where people connect and people see ads, but more importantly, they want to measure results. Last year at Adweek, we announced that we were working with Nielsen. And since then, Nielsen has done over 200 brand lift studies. One of these studies was for Chase's community giving campaign. Due to this campaign, there was an average increase in awareness of 175% of Chase community giving. And the campaign had an even longer term impact. Three million people recommended Chase after the program, and nine million people said they had an improved opinion of Chase's brand. Marketers have always known that the best recommendation comes from a friend. What you want is to get your customers to recommend your product to their friends. This in many ways is the holy grail of marketing, what we've all been working for for so long. When a customer has a good experience in the real world, you know, maybe they'll tell a couple people you hope they get to a handful. When it happens on Facebook, the average action is shared with the average number of friends, which is 130 people. This is the elusive goal we've been searching for for a long time, making your customers your marketers. For, fans that have, for, fa for brands that have invested in Facebook fans, those fans become your endorsers going forward. Nokia has almost 1.8 million fans across several pages. And their ads they run with us have a greater impact because of their endorsers. If you use Facebook, you know that whenever you like something, it shows to your friends. When Nokia runs an ad, it shows with friends of people they like. Unsurprisingly, research has shown that that friend endorsement makes a huge difference. So in Nokia's case, that they have 1.8 million people who are there to endorse their ads makes a really big difference in the results. We studied this with Nielsen. Across all of our ads that they've studied, on average, if you compare an ad without a friend's endorsement and you compare an ad with a friend's like, these are the differences. On average, 68% more people are likely to remember seeing the ad with their friend's name, 100%, so two times more likely to remember the ad's message, and 300% more likely to purchase. Now, people-based marketing can't just help people remember ads. It has to drive to sales, because that's what the marketers need at the end of the day. Einstein Brothers Bagels, they're a franchise around the country. They have about 350 stores. They started their page, and they got about 5,000 fans. And then they decided that they would give out free bagels. So they put up a status update saying, we're giving free bagels to our fans. By the end of the week, they had 50,000 fans on their page, so they thought, wow, this might work. So then they ran some ads with us and got that fan count up to 300,000. And the following week, they had their best sales of the year. And this was the only thing they had done that week. So they knew that those sales were a direct result of their Facebook ad activity. When you put people at the center of the web and empower them to be your marketers to their friends, we think these are the type of results you can have. This is word of mouth marketing. And for the first time, you can do it at scale. Brands have always tried to put people at the center of their marketing. We've all been working on this for a long time. We've taken a lot of approaches, but it's been hard to reach a mass audience. This is what we now are able to offer. On any given day on Facebook, you can reach 250 million people globally. In the US, on an average day, you can reach more than 60 million people. And that's twice the audience of American Idol. And you can do this every day, all day, all year long. So Facebook's grown and the internet's grown. And Nielsen announced yesterday that they're going to be measuring us the way they measure TV, working with P&G, Verizon, Microsoft, and us, and I'm sure other partners who will jump on board. They're creating an online GRP metric. This will help people better understand their advertising effectiveness across different media, be able to measure apples to apples. So one of the things that's always been effective, and marketers know this, is creating a great emotional message and bringing it to your customers. On Facebook, 
you can combine that activity and that ability to create and deal emotionally, really connect emotionally with personalization and the scale that we offer.